Rails applications often contain a lot of forms which follow a similar pattern. This can leave a lot of repetition. Now there are some gems to help out with this, such as Simple Form or Formtastic, both of which I've covered in previous episodes. But in this episode, I want to show you how you can remove some duplication by creating your own custom form builder from scratch. So here's the application we'll be working with. We have a form here for editing a product record, and there are a variety of different fields here. So let's dive into the source code and see how we can clean it up using a custom form builder. Now there's quite a bit to this form template, but let's focus on specifically this area right here where I'm outputting various fields for each of the attributes on our model. Now we have uh, quite a bit of a pattern here where I have the field div and then a label and then the field itself. So what I would like to do is make this more concise with the help of a form builder. And I just wanna call f.text field, for example, and then that will actually just output everything that we need, including the field div and the label. The first step is to make a new form builder and I'll do that in a new directory under the app directory here. I'll just call it form builders and this will actually automatically be loaded in Rails 3.1. I just have to make a new file in here. I'm going to call it labeled form builder .rb. And then make a new class in here called labeled form builder. And this actually needs to inherit from action view helpers form builder. And then we can override any methods we want in here, such as the text field. And this accepts the attribute name and any other arguments the user might pass in. Now what we want in here is a content tag for the div tag, and this will have a class of field, and that's the way it will match what we had in the HTML. Now unfortunately, you can't call helper methods like this content tag method directly inside of a form builder. However, you do have access to this template instance variable that you can call helper methods through. So just make sure to prefix that every time you want to call a helper. And then inside of this div, we want our label, and we could just call label directly like this because in the view we called f.label and here f is our form builder that we're in. So we can just pass in the name to our label tag and then we want to have our uh, break tag and then we want to follow that with our actual text field tag and we could just call super for that and that will pass everything up to uh, the actual action view helper form builder so that way it performs the normal behavior. So now back inside of our form template, whenever we call text field, it's going to output all this other stuff as well. So that means wherever we're calling text field, we can just make this more concise by calling text field directly. Now for this to work, we actually have to instruct our form to use that specific builder. So we can do this on our form for call, passing in a builder option and passing in our labeled form builder class. And then that way this F variable here passed into the block will be an instance of our custom labeled form builder. Now you may need to restart your Rails app for it to pick up that form builders directory, but once you do, you can try reloading the page and we didn't get any errors, so looks like it's working. So now you can apply this to the other fields as well, such as this description field, which is a text area instead of a text field. So we'll just make this more concise in the same way. Now going back to the form builder, we can just duplicate this method, and that will just work by just calling this text area instead of text field. However, there will be often a lot of fields that you want to do this to, so it can get pretty repetitive inside of here. Instead, you may want to clean this up with some metaprogramming. So what I'll do here is take each of those method names that I want to override and put them in an array, such as text field and text area. There's also a password field, and there's collection select, and whatever other fields that you want to override in the same manner. Then we can loop through each of these and pass in the method name. And in here I'll call define method, pass in that method name, and then pass in a block here. Now this block needs to take the same arguments as that we're passing in to this method here. And then we can just pass in the rest of this code is similar as well. Now one difference is, is that the super call here, uh, we the arguments passed in, can't be explicit or implicit with the uh, arguments passed into the block. So we need to specify these same arguments passed into our super call like that. And that way, each of those methods will be defined for each of those fields. Now there are some fields where you don't want the same behavior such as the checkbox. Here we have the checkbox displayed first and then the label afterwards, and there's no break. So um, we still want that same concise behavior, but the behavior needs to be a little bit different here. Now, since this code is similar to what we've done before, I'll just paste in the code for defining this checkbox method. Here we uh, create that same field div, 
And then we add our checkbox followed by the label. And then we could test this out by reloading the page. And that looks the same, but that shows us that it works. Now, what if we need to further customize this behavior? For example, what if on the price field here, we want to change the label to say unit price instead of just price? Well, it would be nice if we added a label option that we could pass in so we can specify the full label text like that. Well, Rails provides a handy method that we can pass to an array of arguments called extract options. And then this will return an options hash that's at the end of the arguments or uh, generate a new empty hash if there aren't any options passed in. And so we can pass this in here to the label here, just passing in the label option and then that way it will customize the text. Now, since we need to do this for all other fields as well, I like to move this out into its own method called field label. And this takes the name and arguments and that way we can just move this all into here for generating the label. And then we can call this uh, field label here and just pass in all the arguments into here as well. So that means we can do the same thing up here for generating that label with the uh, label option. And now when we reload the page, watch this price field, it now changes to unit price. That works. But there is one issue with this, and that is that the options fall through to the actual text field. For example, if you can see our price text field here, you can see it has this label option where it shouldn't because that is a custom option we passed in through to customize the label. To fix this, we can override this method called objectify options on our form builder, and this takes a hash of options. So we can uh, pass this on to super and then extract out the one option that we don't want to pass on to the elements, in this case, the label option. And then the next time we reload the page, that price field here no longer has that label option. Now, another neat thing we could do with a form builder is to automatically detect which fields are required. For example, here in our product model, we have this validates presence of call to make sure we have a name and a price. So it would be nice if in our form, we automatically communicated this somehow. Well, back in our form builder, we can detect which fields are required by reflecting on the validations. And here's how you could do that. First, we need to fetch the object that this form is for, and we can just call object to access that model object. And then we can fetch the class and say validators on that given attribute, and that will return an array of validators for that attribute. And then we need to detect if any of these are given validators are kind of the uh, presence validator. And to get that, it's actually at active model, validations, presence, validator. Now, I know that's kind of a mouthful, but all this will tell us if that given field has validates uh, the presence validation. So let's turn this into a class on our label here. So I'll pass the class option, then we can say required if the uh, required option uh, is present. And then you can see this effect when I hit reload here, watch these two labels, and they become bold because those are now marked as required. And I've done the bold styling off camera here. All right, so these fields here are looking great, but there's still other areas in this form that I would like to clean up. The error messages are one of them. Usually you want to display error messages in the same way for each of your fields. Um, so I would like to uh, move this out into that form builder. We could just have it say f.error messages, just like uh, older versions of Rails used to. I'll just paste in the code for this error messages method. Uh, there's quite a bit of code, but it's quite simple. Most of it is just uh, adding tags basically duplicating what we had in the view there for the div h2 tag and an order, unordered list where we are looping through all the error messages and displaying them. Now, if you find yourself using content tag a lot in your form builders like I'm doing here, it can be a pain to go through the template every single time. So you may want to set that up as a delegation. So you can say uh, delegate the uh, content tag and maybe the tag method to the template instance variable there. And that way we can call it directly. And the end result looks like that, much nicer. Now we're almost done cleaning up this form template. There are just a couple more things to do. One of them is easy enough, is just changing this submit button so it automatically does the uh, actions div surrounding it so that it matches the other fields. So inside of the form builder, we just have to override that submit method so that it adds that action div automatically like this. Now that leaves us with one more thing to clean up in the form template, and that is this section of code right here. I created this in the revised version of episode 17, where I showed you how to uh, create a list of checkboxes that define a many-to-many -many association. So you can check out that episode if you want to figure out exactly how this code works. But this is a great candidate for moving into a form builder because it's quite complex and we can refactor it better there. 
Now I want this method to behave just like collection select because it has a very similar concept where it's listing associated records. So the way I want it to look is to call collection checkboxes. And then I want it to be the name of the attribute, which is category IDs. And then I want the uh, records, which is all categories. And then the ID and name attributes on the, each of the category records to uh, display and use as the identifier. Now the code required for this is somewhat complicated. I'm just going to paste it all into one method here, but I would probably end up refactoring it further. So here's what that method looks like. And basically it's just doing the exact same thing it was doing in the view, where it's looping through all the records and displaying a checkbox with a label for each of those. So we could try this out by reloading this page here. Everything still looks the same, so it all works. And we're still able to define categories here and submit them just like we did in episode 17. So our form is looking really great now. It's all very concise. And if we do something like the many-to-many -many checkboxes elsewhere in our application, it's very easy to apply that same logic there. However, it all requires that we still use and specify the label form builder, which specifying this option every time isn't very pretty. To help with this, I recommend moving this into your own custom form for helper method. I'm gonna call this one labeled form four. And inside of my application helper module, I can define that method and it would look something like this called labeled form four. Basically it would just add the labeled form builder option to the form four call like that. And that wraps up this episode. We now have a fully working form that hasn't changed much, but our form template looks much nicer thanks to our custom form builder. Now I should mention again, there are two gems that you should also check out, Simple Form and Formtastic, because they help you do something very similar to what we created here. But sometimes if you need something very custom, it's uh, good to know how to create your own custom form builder.